at the time that you're going to be listening to this, I am going to be on vacation. I'm headed to the beach and I go to the beach every year with my family to just celebrate each other, to be with each other, to celebrate birthdays, to hang out. Now, before you get all these great ideas of what beach celebrations might look like, I want to paint you a really very clear picture. Okay? Picture a very windy beach. Picture a northwest beach. And there's going to be some gray skies. There's going to be lots of breeze blowing. And by breeze, I don't mean the gentle breeze that might keep the mosquitoes away. I mean, like if you throw a beach ball, it's going to whip the beach ball down the beach kind of kind of wind. <laughs> We are probably not wearing swimsuits. We might be wearing parkas. We might be wearing hooded sweatshirts. And every once in a while, if it is really chilly, you might see Danny really trying so hard to enjoy a warm beach setting. I might be wearing shorts and a sweatshirt, but I am wrapped completely in layers of blankets. Okay, that's the beach we go to. (laughs) And if Mr. Fig and Farm, you're listening to this, you know I love it just as much as you do. But I am being a little bit facetious here. This is a beach that that Greg's family has been going to for years, since he was five years old. It is so special to his family, and it has become so special to our family, a vacation that we just don't want to miss. And when we were living in Iowa, we just had to. There were summers we couldn't afford to come back home. But now that we're back in the Northwest, we are able to go. Sometimes, some years the beach experience does look like that picture I painted for you. Other times it can be sunny, but we're not necessarily ocean swimmers. It is not Southern California. It is not the Bahamas. It is the Oregon coast. And as you can imagine, it is very chilly. So we might go stand in the ocean. We might be brave enough to stand knee deep in the ocean. (laughs) We might just walk along the edge and think, okay, that's chilly enough. But there is a wonderful little stream that leads to the ocean. And by stream, I actually mean you can, um, you can't really swim in it, but you can definitely play. So when the boys were little and with their little cousins now, it's just way too fun. There's lots of splashing, lots of building sandcastles, lots of getting wet. It's, It's lots of fun. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because we're talking about the beach. We're talking about the coast today. And although I wish I could invite all of you with me on vacation, I'm going to give you a little snapshot about what coastal living can be like in the form of a decorating style called Coastal Grandma. Last year, last July, I talked about how Coastal Grandma is a style that's not new to the scene, but it is a new term and a term that has now been coined in order to encompass this really lovely style. Think about a really classic middle-aged woman who is walking down probably the streets of a coastal town wearing white linen pants and a blue and white striped pressed, yes, ironed button down shirt with maybe a little white sweater hanging over her back with a straw bag and leather sandals. Are you getting the picture? Oh, and really trendy sunglasses. This is coastal grandma. It is a lifestyle. It is a clothing style. It is a decorating style and it is classic. So if you're looking for ways to decorate your home in a way that is classic, that doesn't necessarily follow any trends, that stands the test of time, Coastal Grandma might be for you. So today, as I am enjoying vacation with my family, I'm pressing repeat on this episode I aired last year. And what you're going to hear is the recording that was taken in my outdoor office. It was a lovely summer last year in the Pacific Northwest. This year too, but last year when I recorded, I was sitting on the back porch. I could get the sun ray on my cheek and I was just enjoying the scenes. So if you pick up on some birds or some water splashing in the background, that's what that is. And if you find yourself at the end of this episode wanting to finally take action in your own home, you're wanting to maybe take that first step towards creating a home that feels a little bit more like you. If this style, Coastal Grandma, resonated with you, or the quiet luxury style I shared with you about a month ago, if that resonates with you and you would like to infuse that into your own home, learn how to incorporate that into your own decorating style, 
My decorating SOS calls are available. I have a few more openings until the end of August, and maybe one of them is yours. I would be honored to be invited into your home to help you brainstorm ways that you can transform your space to make it more conducive to what you want to be reflective of you. Whether it's hanging on the walls, more functionality, or just a space that you can't stop gushing about. You can book that call by going to the link in the show notes or by visiting figandfarmathome.com forward slash book hyphen a hyphen call. All right, friends, enjoy the episode and I'm going to go enjoy the beach. I'll see you soon. We grew up with the phrase, home is where the heart is, but our culture has shifted and now the message is, home should be Pinterest perfect. I'm calling BS on that message home. It's not about the stuff. It's about the story. And whether you know it or not, your home is a reflection of you and is already saying something. So what is it that you want it to say? Hey, I'm Danny, a former first grade teacher turned home decorator. Going from a dual income to a single income so I could stay home with my babies meant budget, like ramen eating, goodwill shopping budget. And I learned a few things along the way, like how to bring big style to your home without breaking the bank. And I'm sharing it all with you tips, tricks, decor, and design advice so you can learn to tell your story with your style, where you can start living free from the Pinterest perfect trap and start living a life of intention. Welcome to Fig and Farm at Home, where we design happy living and where it doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. Coastal Grandmother. Are you ready to know what it is? Have you heard of that already? This has been a term that has been floating around this late spring and into summer. And it caught my attention recently. I can't remember where, maybe on Pinterest or something. But Coastal Grandmother is a style that has been around for a while. I think there's just new energy behind it. And it's gotten a name because years ago, when this first emerged on the scenes, and we're talking in the 80s years ago, when it first emerged on the scene, this term was not used with it. So this is a new thing and very similar to when I taught you what cottage core was last spring. It's a new term and it's not just a decorating style. This is a lifestyle. It is also um, a term to describe Um, a way to dress. So we're going to talk about those before we get to the decor. We're going to talk about what coastal grandmother means in terms of clothing, what it means in terms of lifestyle, and then of course what you're all here for, what it means in terms of home decorating. So just to give you an idea, coastal grandmother style is it's based on clean and classic styles. And if you can think of a clean and classic timeless style of the middle-aged woman, living in a luxurious oceanfront setting. Can you picture that? What I'm picturing, and this is kind of the idea of what clothing this grandma might use. And by grandma, I don't mean like 60s. I mean, well, maybe, but maybe like 50s. But this is timeless. This is the oversized button-up shirt, maybe relaxed and a little relaxed trousers and trousers I mean chinos maybe linen pants paired with leather sandals an oversized straw bag with a teeny tiny touch of leather as the accent a straw hat of course some oversized sunglasses maybe with a striped cotton sweater that's kind of draped over their shoulders even um, tied in front of their shoulders Are you getting the picture? Are you picturing Diane Keaton? That's what I'm asking. (laughs) That's what I'm wondering. Because if you are not, I want you to. And you're going to hear why further down the road. But I want you to picture that. And I want you to picture a nice stroll in an ocean side town. And probably not on the beach, but maybe. But really more on the nice stroll. You're on an oceanfront property and you got it. The colors are very muted. There are no bright colors. This is not Oceanside uh, spring break kind of garment. This is, this is relaxed and it's luxurious and it is classy. And I'm picturing this palette. I'm picturing whites. And by the way, the oversized button-up shirt is pressed. It is ironed. <laughs> this is not coming out of my closet with lots of wrinkles on it. This is ironed, maybe even starched. The linen pants, of course, look relaxed, but they are 
relaxed and pressed rather than slouchy and crumpled. <laughs> but the palette is white, maybe a sandy color, a light, light taupe, maybe a light blue like chambray. You might see stripes, subtle stripes of blues and whites or blues and creams and maybe even any various shades of blue, navy, cornflower, light blue, but probably not turquoise. Are you getting that, that scope of the palette? Very, very beachy, but not cheesy beachy. We don't have the picture of a seashell or a, um, a screen printed seashell on our shirt or a screen printed seashell on our bag. It is a very refined look. Okay, that's it in clothing. Are you getting the picture? Do you see who it is we're talking about? Coastal Grandma is in our mind. But Coastal Grandma is also a lifestyle. So if you can imagine this lady, and she is taking long walks on the beach, and she might be going really slowly. She's not out there for exercising. Remember, she is wearing her leather sandals. She's walking solo, or she's walking with her dog, and her dog is probably bigger and very puppy-like. I'm picturing a golden retriever. Can you picture this? Very sweet and jovial and super, super well-behaved. This woman owns a capsule wardrobe, so a lot like what I just described, but it is pieces can be mixed and matched and interwoven easily, and the pants can go with all the shirts, and the shirts can go with all the pants, and maybe even a long, flowy skirt, and it's super timeless. This woman probably has tea time book clubs, maybe even wine evenings with girlfriends over and they are enjoying casual conversation with appetizers and wine or maybe tea and a really good book. I can picture them sitting on a screened porch on their wicker furniture and just enjoying each other's company. This woman probably visits farmers markets but she doesn't just visit by walking she visits on a bike and not just any bike not a mountain bike Maybe this bike has a basket on it, and this bike has a cute little bell, maybe even a little tassel hanging from it. She's toting her oversized straw bag, and she has fresh flowers poking out of it, or maybe even a baguette for dinner. Maybe the baguette that she's going to turn into Christini for her afternoon tea with her girlfriends. And you can picture her in her garden, her oceanfront property, and her garden is luxurious. It looks like an English garden garden overflowing with peonies overflowing with gladiolas overflowing with all the blooms and you can pick her or picture her outside cutting fresh flowers for tabletop displays this is the lifestyle it's casual it's relaxed it is enjoyable it is vacation but not vacation because this is her life it is easy it is really lovely it's mindful of people and not necessarily stuff. It is taking, it's kind of like a stop and smell the roses kind of lifestyle. And it's really enjoyable. I'm picturing this and I can, I can almost picture myself dressed this way and walking those, those, um, ocean side streets, <clears throat> carrying my little market bag ready to, um, bring home the fresh fresh fruits and veggies and the fresh flowers for display. Really relaxed, not rushing to the next thing, not overstuffed with appointments. This is so enviable. And when we move into decor, when we move into her home, the home is also a reflection of that. The home resembles a lot of what we just talked about. When you're thinking about the Coastal Grandma style, it's embracing the little things that make your house feel like a home. It makes it feel super cozy. There's a feeling word that's attached to it in such a way that you can feel like you're there. You can feel the calm, the cozy, the warm. You can feel like it is an invitation ready for book club, ready for wine night, ready for game night with your family, ready for relaxing, always ready for relaxing, and it's not super fussy. I love this. <laughs> this is fantastic. So one thing that as I was doing a little bit of research on the Coastal Grandma style, one thing that came to mind was this idea that when you look at these interiors, it is like you're drinking a cup of cocoa. It's like you're sitting on the couch wrapped in a blanket and you're drinking a cup of cocoa. 
really calm and soothing. And this is what these interiors look like. When you're inside of these coastal grandma styled homes, you can expect decor to feel very much like the clothing of the coastal grandma. You can picture a palette that is pretty, I don't want to say sedate, but pretty limited in bright tones and bright hues. There's lots of whites and sandy colors and light taupes, light blues. It's very airy and it is open and I can picture textures like wovens. Just like when we picture her straw bag and we picture her straw hat, we can picture those textures inside of the home and not necessarily with wicker furniture, but maybe with rattan chairs, maybe with jute rugs. We can picture slight, subtle patterns flowing throughout the space and patterns that are timeless, but also pushing the envelope of modern. And what I mean by that is they are timeless in their beauty. They are timeless in the color palette. White and blue is a very timeless color palette, but they're pushing the boundary because there's pattern play. You might see a striped blue and white rug and a blue and white striped pillow on the the couch and not a very bright blue and white this is a little bit more toned down a little bit more subtle and that would be paired next to maybe a blue and white large floral print this is very opposite of cottage core where cottage core has very small small florals coastal grandma has very large florals and where cottage core has very closed in dark kind of um, cozy and brooding rooms with lots of wallpaper. The coastal grandma is a little bit opposite of that, and it is bright and airy. And you might have walls that are painted white to reflect the light that is coming in through the windows. You might have bamboo shades on the walls with curtains that are draped right in front of it. It's very textural, it's very soothing in the appearance, and it does feel a little bit like an invitation to relax, an invitation to sit a little longer at the table, an invitation to take off your shoes, pull up your feet, and enjoy a conversation about a good book, maybe a summertime read. What you might notice in a coastal grandma home is herbs on the kitchen windowsill. You might notice fresh bowls of fruit on the dining table or fresh flowers from your garden that are displayed organically in, in vases throughout your home, on the coffee table, the entry table, the kitchen. You might notice windows that are thrown open and rays of sunlight beating in. You'll notice natural light and it will feel bright and airy. You'll notice that the pillows are not, you'll notice that the pillows are thrown kind of organically on the couches and they are, they look like they were tossed right off the floor and put onto place. They're not staged or chopped you know that chopped look of the pillow where there's a v in the middle by the way that is one of my biggest pet peeves <laughs> uh, is a chopped pillow i don't chop my pillows i i don't know if you chop your pillows but if you come to my home whether i am cleaning for you or not you will not see a chopped pillow <laughs> you'll see a fluffed pillow but not a chopped pillow you will see when you go into this coastal grandma home it is clean and it is simple it is bright and it is casual and it is airy and it's all of the teeny tiny little details the teeny tiny little details that make the house feel like a home and those teeny tiny details aren't really decorated it's more like a curation over time rather than a refined decor there's going to be seaside elements and colors just like in her wardrobe you can think about the whites and the sand colors the light taupe the glass the um, color of what you might picture sea glass to be, the light, light greens, the light, light blues. You're gonna see lots of different textures. You might even see, we talked about the rattan texture, that naturally woven texture, but you might see driftwood, or you might see rope, you might see jute, those natural textures that kind of define the space. And most importantly, you will see slip covers slip covers and if you listen to that podcast a couple weeks ago with Liz Marie Gavon and she lives in this all white home I don't know that her style would necessarily be coastal grandma but maybe she talks so much about using slip covers and how slip covers are such a great way to just add longevity into your furniture they create a 
a casual, cozy style and are super cleanable. And this is definitely indicative of the Coastal Grandma style, are these slip covers. And I found, I, when I was doing some research for you about this Coastal Grandma style that has just really been on the scene as of late, the thing that kept popping up over and over and over again is this idea that the Coastal Grandma style really came from this idea of the interiors from movie sets and not just any old movie set, but movie sets from Nancy Myers. And she's a producer and a director of movies that you probably know, probably have liked, and definitely movies that I know I've been gravitating to the interiors years ago when I first saw them. Movies like Something's Gotta Give, Father of the Bride, one, two, and three. (laughs) The Holiday, It's Complicated, Parent Trap, several movies that have these interiors that are warm and inviting and honestly when I think about Coastal Grandma I immediately picture Diane Keaton I immediately picture her because she embodies that to me because I've pictured her in these styles before in these movies before and this is just synonymous with this Nancy Meyer movie set so do a little research Take a little peek and see what it is that you notice when you see these these movies. But as I was doing some research, I noticed too that, of course, Nancy Myers is thinking, oh, it's wonderful that people are loving this interior style. And yes, it is kind of symbolic of me, but I really want you to get the message of the movie too. <laughs> Which, of course, any of those movies are so much fun. Father of the Bride is one of my absolute favorites. You can ask my sister. I made her watch it over and over and over with me. But one other thing that I noticed is six tips that we learned from these Nancy Meyer movies. And this is coming from the Everyday Girl blog. So you can find it there. I will link that article there so you can read it. But some of the, the tips that they mentioned that have, come, that have kind of defined this Coastal Grandma decor style based on these Nancy Nancy Meyer movies. That's what we're going to be talking about. So the first tip is that white slipcovers are everything. And if you go back and look at some of those movies, you know that yes, absolutely they are. White slipcovers can create a space of airiness and calm and cozy and clean and bright and not fussy and inviting and all of the descriptive words. The second tip was luxury is in all the little details. The little details like we just mentioned, like the fresh flowers cut from the garden, the herbs on the windowsill, the vases um, strewn throughout the home, the blues and the whites intermixing with the blues and the whites, the pattern on pattern play, the subtle light marble countertops, the, the tones of the wood or the layered rug on top of rug. You can see the luxury in all of those teeny tiny details. Third tip is that it is that you aim for the collected and not the decorated. And this is something that I've been saying, if you've been hanging out for a while, you know that this is to be true, that the idea of creating a home that looks like a home and not necessarily a staged real estate piece or even a storefront idea i um a storefront area is that your home can look more refined when it looks curated and that look can happen over it can happen quickly but it generally happens over time it shows that the person has Um, maybe traveled or they've collected items here and there that are personal and personal to their own family story. They are, they're items that have been thoughtfully curated rather than picked through quickly in order to get a look that is going to last a season. The fourth tip is that you absolutely can put a desk in the bedroom. (laughs) And I, I, didn't haven't gone back to look at these Nancy Meyer movies to see that there are desks in every bedroom, but I have noticed in a couple that yes, there are. And for sure, can you have that? Yes. Now I have two boys who have desks in their bedrooms and they are cluttered jumbles of mess. Now they are not the woman who is the coastal grandma, (laughs) but we know that sometimes flat surfaces can lend themselves to that overstuffing or that over just using as a storage item and this is not what the coastal grandma does the coastal grandma of course uses it as a way to 
write handmade thank you notes, or maybe not handmade, but handwritten thank you notes. She's not writing the email or the text. She's writing the note with her stationery that's on the desk with the, the vase of fresh flowers, with a little table lamp, with a little cutie patootie pen jar that has four pens and not an excess, not an overabundance. And she's sitting on a slip covered chair. You can see the picture, right? And this coastal grandma is doing this in a room that has space for the desk. We're not jumbling it into a corner where it is going to interrupt with the flow of the room and the feel of the cozy, inviting space of the room. The fifth tip that comes from these Nancy Myers movies is that classic doesn't mean boring. And if you can picture this coastal grandma in her clothing style, in her lifestyle, it is super classy. And the way that she dresses, the way that she decorates her home is very classy. It is timeless. It looks curated and thought through. And it's super, again, inviting. And classy doesn't necessarily need to be boring. Because of the brightness and the openness and the airiness and the invitation to lounge a little bit longer, you can have the rolled arm sofas with wood tones and the blue and white vase that feels a little bit more traditional, but it doesn't feel super stuffy. Because of the slip covers, because of the white and the open and the airy and the bright, that kind of negates any dark furniture you might have if it is in the form of a coffee table or a side table. It might negate a more traditional lamp shade like the Empire shade, and it might draw you in to this, which is the six step, the juxtaposition of having two styles mixed with one, two global styles. And you know, if you've been hanging around me for a while too, you know that I don't really like to talk about these global styles like traditional or coastal or whatever. I am with this because it is super time sensitive and it is super on the forefront of a lot of what we're going to be seeing on Instagram and Pinterest and you're going to be hearing about it if you haven't already. And so that's why I'm bringing it to your attention. But when we think about things like traditional and the styles of the traditional, like rolled arm sofas, that would be a little bit more traditional, or empire style shades for floor lamps, table lamps, that can read a little bit more traditional. And when that is paired with something that is bright and airy, they can live in a cohabitation that is very relaxed and intentional and purposeful. And it can be when you can marry these different, and I'm air quoting global styles together, this is the the part that creates your unique aesthetic. It is the part that creates a home that is cozy and inviting and displays outward a really put together over time curated look and when you when you land in one sometimes when you land in one decorating style and you land there and you sit in there with heaviness for example we'll say all traditional it can feel stuffy or like you know we went into grandma's attic and from when we were a kid and nothing has changed over time and it's all dark and there's you know do you do you know what I mean? It's grandma's house and not coastal grandma's house, but grandma's house where it's lots of dated, aged, traditional pieces that don't feel necessarily updated or curated or thought through. But this idea of these home decorating tips coming from Nancy Meyer movies is that you can have the juxtaposition of one style carrying over and marrying very nicely with another, like the traditional with the a little bit more bright and modern and airy and this is kind of a fun idea and it is also something that that we talk about in my design 101 class where you don't have to identify with one global style in fact I don't want you to I want you to really do the homework to decide what it is that makes your unique design style unique to you what is your design aesthetic and how is it as unique to you as your own personality. If you were this coastal grandma, we could see it. We could see it in the way that it is bright and airy and these colors are following the same similar palette and it is relaxed and inviting and it makes you feel like you can just sit casually on the chair and you don't really mind if your feet are pulled up under you and you're drinking a glass of wine and oops if you spill. It is super inviting and super forgiving because remember the slipcover and it can go in the wash. (laughs) So what do you think? 
have you heard of Coastal Grandma? And what do you think about the style? Is it something that you have noticed in these movies, even before there is a name for it? Is it something that draws you in? Is it something that stresses you out because of the whiteness? Is it something that you would want? I want to know and I want to hear your opinion. And you can let me know about that over in our Facebook group. You can finish that conversation and let me know what you think. You can get there by going to bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. And extra bonus homework, if you have a favorite Nancy Myers movie, I want to know about it. Which one is it? I will link the article where I got the six tips for home decorating based on the Nancy Myers movies. I will link that so you can read the full description of those, as well as the podcast from a few weeks ago where I talked with Liz Marie Galvan of creating cozy, cozy spaces. And she uses white slipcovers too. And if you're interested in really diving in and understanding what your design aesthetic is and how it's unique to you, how you can create a curated look over time and to get that relaxed feeling that cozy feeling that whatever feeling word it is that you want for your home if you're interested in learning more I want you to book a call I want you to book a call and see how we can work together so that you can move your design needle forward so that you can create a space that looks and feels inviting that looks and feels the way that you want it to that it can have such a feeling just like these Nancy Myers movies that when we watch them we feel a certain way does your home feel a certain way And if not, what is holding you back? And how can I help you achieve that look that you're going for? The look that you want. And maybe you don't even know what it is. And that's how I can help when you book a call. You can do that at figandfarmathome.com forward slash book a call. And I will meet you there. All right. Until next time, go enjoy one of those Nancy Myers movies. I'll see you later. Hey, real quick before you go. If you learned something new or found value in today's podcast, Would you head over to iTunes to Fig and Farm at Home and leave a review and subscribe to the show? That would be awesome. And if you'd like to connect with my community of mamas who are learning to be intentional storytellers within their own homes, join us at bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. There's always more room at the table. See you soon.